safe to say that most of you really did not know my grandmother that well. For the majority of you, I would say that you knew her maybe for the short amount of time that she actually spent in this local region. Others, it may have been some visits that you've made to her or her to you. Whereas others still, you know her, like myself and my brother, from living under the same roof or from close proximity, such as the farm that my mother referred to, East Otto, or even here in Union Springs. And as far as proximity goes, remember the short stint we spent in Mansfield, <laughs> where running water was us going across the street with buckets to the stream and then running back to the house. Right. <laughs> I'm glad that was only for a little while. <laughs> but it was in these uh, arrangements that I got to know my grandmother. And uh, I will say that it was an interesting experience getting to know her as an individual. She could seem like a sweet old lady. In fact, there were a few occasions where she did some extraordinarily kind acts for people, such as the couple that she sold her farm to yes. for a price that was far lower than what the place was actually worth. She also gave me the money that enabled me to buy the car that I'm still to this day driving. A car that had a little under 100,000 miles on it when I bought it and now has over 230,000. But to be honest, my grandmother could also be a hard one. I admittedly do not have a vast store of fond memories. I do remember one time in more recent years of picking her up when I still had that piece of junk van. I was driving her out here for some reason. I don't even remember what I was for. And I put in a CD of Billy Vaughn, if any of you know who Billy Vaughn is. It was uh, saxophone music accompanied by an orchestra. It was, you know, classical, or I guess you could say oldies. Dare I use that term in the company of such wise individuals. <laughs> and she was sitting in the back and she was whistling along to many of the tunes. Obviously, she knew what the songs were. And later, she thanked me for giving her that opportunity to whistle those songs and to reminisce. And she even said that she hadn't whistled like that since she was. But above all, what I remember most about my grandmother is the fact that she had a strength of character that I have not seen in too many people. Some of what my mom had just spoken about here, you heard her talk about accepting the Adventist faith at a pretty young age and uh, leaving home not too terribly young of an age, around about the same time people leave home nowadays, I guess. But uh, one of the things that my grandmother shared with me that my mom did not say <coughs> was that prior to her leaving home, she was given the ultimatum. You know, she pointed out that uh, my grandmother's father was working in the steel mills. And during the Depression, you know, he wasn't hurting for money like many other people were. So, when push came to shove, and after she had accepted the Adventist faith, he gave her an ultimatum. And it was, I will put you through any school you want to go to, medical school, whatever it is you want to do, if you will only give up that faith. And had she not made the decision that she did make, dare I say, none of us would be here today. And I'm not saying that we would not exist. 
I'm not saying that we wouldn't be what we are, but we certainly would not be gathered here for a memorial of my grandmother. And there's a real good chance that I myself would not be in the position that I am in. But it's because she stood up for what she believed in that things took the course that they did. In the face of some pretty good opposition, I might say. But I do have to add that at times that uh, strength of character was misused and misplaced. But I am not here to recall an ill report. I would like to say, though, that whether some would like to admit it or not, I have seen that very same strength of character in those who have descended from her. <laughs> the question is not whether this is true. Rather, the question is how will you use it? When it is your turn to be displayed in such a manner, when somebody has to think of a good word on your behalf, how will you be remembered? Will you be remembered as somebody who lied, cheated, and took what did not belong to you for your own self-gain? Will you be remembered as somebody who couldn't get their life together until the very end? Now don't get me wrong, my, my, my grandmother was neither a thief nor a vagrant. I simply throw those phrases out there as food for thought. Will you use that strength of character so that you can hold on to a grudge? A grudge for something that happened so long ago that can never be changed, that it will do nothing more than eaten from the inside like a cancer. Will someone struggle to think of good things to say about you? When those that you love are put in the position of looking back on your life, will they have to weed through a closet full of ill recollections in order to find something fond to remember from. I pray that this is not the case. It is my hope that the strength of character that my grandmother gave me will be tempered with mercy. Yes, there are times when difficult decisions and difficult things must be done, but there are also times when a heavy hand can and should be lightened. I hope that I can show So you know, I'm referring to things like gardening, stacking hay and stacking wood for endless hours during the summer, so that there would be and winter and winter, so that when when winter did come, the bulk of that work was done and you didn't have to do it out in the cold so much. And I can tell you this: that my grandmother could quote Ellen White like it was nobody's business. 
So did I learn a few things from her? Yes, I did. But before I conclude, I would like to ask you to search yourself, those of you who knew her best, and ask how much of her character do I have inside me? And don't just give yourself the answer you want, but be honest with yourself. Try looking at the world with eyes bigger than just that little corner of life that affects you directly and those things that you care most about. But look at yourself objectively. You might be surprised at how much of that character is a part of you. That is the way things are. We either learn a trait and embrace it, or we hate a trait and do everything we can to be the opposite of it. Either way, we are still influenced by it. The balance is somewhere in the middle. It is my hope that we can all learn the real balance and not go through life lopsided in either one direction or another. I will miss my grandma. I wish she could have met myself. But I guess that was just not meant to be. I hope what I can do from her life is glean the right lessons and not just the ones that I think are best. I hope we can all learn from her life and take away from it something positive for ourselves. And I also hope that we can implement that positive thought or trait into our own lives. And then, Let's each one try to pass those positive things on. For in so doing, we never really die. Our body may certainly return to the dust from which it came, and our spirit most certainly will return to God who gave it to us. But in passing on our character to others, who we are as individuals never really goes away. And maybe, maybe, we can leave the world a little better than in the condition that we are. Thank you. I would like to say